Another historic day, this time inside an Atlanta courtroom. In a sweeping nearly 100-page indictment, former President Donald Trump, the leading candidate for the 2024 Republican nomination, was indicted today for trying to overturn his loss to Joe Biden in Georgia in the last election, a state Trump lost to Joe Biden by just under 12,000 votes. All elections in our nation are administered by the states, which are given the responsibility of ensuring a fair process and an accurate counting of the votes. The state's role in this process is essential to the functioning of our democracy. Trump charged with 13 counts, including racketeering, conspiracy to commit impersonating a public officer, conspiracy to commit forgery, and false statements and false writings. He has previously denied any wrongdoing. 18 others also indicted, including Trump's former personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and another 30 unindicted co-conspirators. The indictment detailing that the defendants refused to accept that Trump lost. They're talking about 161 acts that were committed as part of this criminal enterprise. And what she does is she takes it through chronologically starting from actually before the election. In act number one, she makes a reference to the fact that on October 31st, he's already talking about making a speech declaring victory, even if he doesn't win. And so she's saying, in effect, that's where it starts. It starts even before election day. Also indicted today were some of the fake electors recruited by the Trump campaign. The indictment alleges that members of the enterprise corruptly solicited Georgia legislators instead to unlawfully appoint their own presidential electors for the purpose of casting electoral votes for Donald Trump. This was an effort to get the legislature to choose a, an alternate slate of electors who could present themselves falsely, wrongly, as the duly elected uh, electors for Donald Trump. That, that would then give Vice President Pence a choice, an opportunity to say, look, there's a dispute here and it has to go to the House of Representatives or it has to get tossed back to the state. When I look at this, it, I think of a couple of things. First of all, the fact that so many lawyers are indicted here. I mean, these are attorneys who are being charged with a crime uh, for their role in, in this effort. This indictment is the culmination of District Attorney Fonnie Willis's two-and-a-half-year investigation. Meanwhile, President-elect Biden is now projected to win the state of Georgia, the first time a Democrat has done that in nearly 30 years. In November 2020, two recounts in Georgia, including one requested by Trump, showing the same result. Biden had won the state. Authorities are ordering a recount by hand. Georgia was the center of the political universe for, for a couple of key reasons. At the time, uh, no one thought that it had a chance of going to Joe Biden. And suddenly, here are these surprise results, close results, but surprise results that, that certified Joe Biden as the winner. At the same time, you had not one but two Senate seats on the line. That is when the alleged pressure campaign began. Trump and his associates making baseless claims of massive election fraud online and on TV news shows. The recount being done in Georgia will tell us nothing because these fraudulent ballots will just be counted again. So you believe so that the you president believe still has a path to victory? Multiple paths, yes, absolutely. Through the legislature and through the court. We're seeing the results in multiple states where we're now identifying specific votes flipped, like in a couple of Georgia counties. With every passing verdict that went against Donald Trump, you saw an increase in the rhetoric around the idea that this election had been stolen or falsified or that there was sufficient chicanery, dead people voting. Death threats, physical threats, intimidation. It's too much. It's not right prompting this very public plea to then-President Trump himself to stop making unfounded claims. What you don't have the ability to do, and you need to step up and say this, is stop inspiring people to commit potential acts of violence. Someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to get shot, someone's going to get killed. In one instance, included in the indictment, Trump and his allies targeting two Fulton County poll workers, Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shay Moss. Of Ruby Freeman and Shay Freeman Moss and one other gentleman, quite obviously, surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine. 
This surveillance video from election night edited and manipulated to allegedly show Ruby passing Shay a USB drive of stolen votes. In emotional testimony before the January 6th committee last year, Shay explained that it was something completely innocent. What was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. The mother and daughter telling ABC News exclusively how their lives were turned upside down by threats from Trump supporters. They were saying that I should be hung, me and my mom will die, and you know, like, burning crosses, it's like a slap in the face, like, just very hateful things. They would say really, really bad racist stuff, you know, we know where you live, we coming to get you. In the weeks that followed, the former president's false election fraud claims went far beyond poll workers. We know the Democrats will have dead people voting and you got to watch it. Dead people, you wouldn't believe how many illegal aliens from out of the state and they'll be filing out and filling out ballots for people who don't even exist. There's no way we lost Georgia. There's no way. The rigged, that was a rigged election, but we're still fighting it. This was a concerted effort, um, legal, political, uh, it's, it's certainly one that involved big aspects of public relations that, that sought to exert pressure on elected officials to try to change the outcome of an election. The indictment also alleging that Trump, along with Mark Meadows, pressured a public official to violate his oath of office in early January 2021. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. In a call with Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, pressuring him for more than an hour to find the votes needed to overturn Biden's win. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. Raffensperger later testified before the January 6th committee about that very call. Was the president here asking you for exactly what he wanted? One more vote than his opponent. What I knew is that we didn't have any votes to find. We had continued to look. Uh, we investigated, like I just shared the numbers with you. There were no votes to find. That was an accurate count that had been certified. Fonnie Willis opened her investigation shortly after. I am going to look at anyone that attempted to influence the November 2020 election. And as news surfaced that she was preparing for indictments, Trump repeatedly and loudly attacked her online and during campaign rallies. Right next door in Georgia, the racist district attorney goes after me for a perfect phone call, even more perfect than the call I made to Ukraine. This is the second indictment against the former president this month. In addition to Georgia, Trump now faces criminal cases in Manhattan, Florida and Washington, D.C. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. While the indictment details the threat Trump and his associates posed to democracy, there were real lives impacted, too. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American not to target one. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess everything that I do. Um, it's affecting my life in a, in a major way, in every way, all because of lies. And joining me now is ABC News ed executive editorial producer John Santucci, who has, who has spent, spent nearly a decade covering Donald Trump for us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thanks Juju. You know, <clears throat> 19 people, a sweeping indictment uh, that we have discussed. Some of Trump's closest advisors, Mark Meadows, his former chief of staff, Rudy Giuliani, yeah. Sidney Powell. And yet your reporting suggests that when he was briefed on the names and Rudy came up, yeah, it hit Rudy, different. Rudy struck, struck him yeah. more than anything else, which is fascinating, Juju, because, you know, Donald Trump and personal relationships, he doesn't really have many. He doesn't really have many friends, many associates that he's close to. But Rudy Giuliani is different. He is someone that he has had a relationship for nearly 30 years. He is a New Yorker through and through like Donald Trump. So to look at that relationship, to think that the two of them are now on an indictment together, I'm told by multiple people the prospect of it, just when Donald Trump was thinking about this days ago, it really stuck him. 
And yet, and yet Fonnie Willis has said this evening that he may, she may try all 19 co-conspirators together. Do you think Donald Trump is concerned that any of them might flip? Oh, I think, I think Donald Trump is freaking out about it because, listen, Donald Trump knows at the end of the day that nobody wants to go to jail. Let's be clear. Donald Trump also knows that he cannot give anybody a pardon in this case. He's not president anymore. That's clear. But even if he did become president, this is a state case. This is incredibly different. I'm told that, among other things, they're trying to figure out contacts with some people because, look, these are people that Donald Trump hasn't necessarily spoken to in the last two years. So that's going to be a real critical thing right now. Where does everybody stand and Team Trump trying to figure that out? Well, John Santucci, as always, we appreciate your insights. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Juju. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.